Welcome everyone. Glad to have you here. Today I'm here with John DeVries from NYSource and Ben Gilman from NYSource and also Joe Howell and Dan Lewis, both from Critigen. And we're here to talk about uh, some success that they had working together in a project just recently uh, that we call the Service Line Mapping Initiative. Um, John is a Director of Asset Knowledge Management at NYSource and Ben is a GIS Strategy Manager. Um, Joe Howell is a Principal Consultant for Pipelines and Renewables and Dan Lewis is one of our uh, industry leads for utilities. And I just wanna thank you guys for being here. And we wanna talk about specifically about uh, what happened when we engaged with NYSource uh, to solve a specific business problem that they were experiencing. Uh, I understand that you guys were all involved in this. And so let's have this conversation and see if we can uh, give some um, interesting insights to those who are watching this video. Um, John and Dan, you guys kind of worked at a little bit higher level on this, on a strategy level. Maybe you guys could start the conversation by telling us just a little bit about how you got hooked up, how this problem became, um, became known and how you guys decided to address it not at NYSource. John, you could tell us a little bit about your initiatives and then where that went from there. How about if we start the conversation there? Yeah, that, that sounds good. And may, maybe I'll, I'll take a start and thanks for having us today, Bruce. Um, I, I'll actually maybe go back just a step further, John, Joe, Ben, and uh, I actually you know go back to spring of uh, 2019, I think it was. And um, we were actually introduced through uh, a mutual business partner, uh, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, we'd been doing some work uh, with them in the utility space with a, a number of different customers. Um, and they were, had started to engage with NYSource around a few different things, um, looking at some IT modernization initiatives just broadly, uh, as well as looking at, at some of their um, safety related programs that, that John will tell us a little bit more about. And so I'd actually uh, gone to, to NYSource's offices a few times that spring, uh, just to talk generally about strategic road mapping of GIS systems, different ways that it could be applied to the future of NYSource's business. And it was really sort of broad um, visioning type of, of workshops. Um, and it was through that uh, introduction that we started to work a bit more closely with John and his team uh, around some of their safety initiatives. So John, why don't I, I pass it over to you and you can pick it up there. Yeah, thanks, Dan, uh, and thanks, Bruce. Uh, I, we did uh, have some of those early kind of visioning uh, meetings early in the year, uh, but uh, mid-year, roughly, there was a safety incident in one of our uh, operating companies, uh, which led us to come together in what we were calling a deep dive. Uh, so you think of kind of a safety stand down, it, it, it brought in folks from all across the company uh, to really challenge ourselves and say, hey, how can we make sure something like this never happens again? Uh, what else could go wrong? Uh, how bad can it be? And, and what should we be doing about it? Uh, and one of the teams uh, I had the opportunity of leading there was focused on data and records. Uh, so we had the opportunity to bring uh, Critigen in to be part of that, uh, that effort uh, and really started with questions of, of what, what would be a, a common sense, no regret, improve safety now uh, improvement for us to make. And I uh, had a lot of ideas uh, that, that got thrown out there and really coalesced around uh, service line mapping as being the right thing for us to do uh, right out of the gate. So that, that's what led us to the decision and some of the background of why we came together, uh, kind of took a pause to the initiatives that we did have going on uh, to support that deep dive. Uh, and then that, that led to the service line mapping effort soon after uh, the deep dive ended. So with service line mapping, what was the state of play before you had this deep dive? What, what, where was NYSource on their mapping of the service lines? Yeah, good question. So we have operations across seven, several states uh, and uh, there was some differentiation where some have been mapping for several years uh, and some at that time were still not mapping newly installed or replaced services. So, uh, Part of what we did, what we'll talk about here, the, the kind of uh, technology and automated approach uh, to mapping uh, legacy services, but we also had process changes required uh, to start mapping going forward. Uh, so we'll talk a bit more about that automated approach, uh, but that was our main focus 
through the service line mapping effort in, in partnership with Critigen is how do we come up with a, a tool with high confidence, uh, add features to GIS that allow us to identify where our customers located and what main are those customers connected to. Uh, so that that's kind of the state we had the vast majority uh, not mapped in GIS at that time uh, and set ourselves a, a target uh, to go after and hit. And in all but one state, we were able to uh, hit or exceed that target. So you were convinced that better mapping of your service lines would, you know, not if not solve, really make a, a better showing for you on safety um, going forward. Ben, it sounds like this was your baby, um, you know, maybe in that meeting you and you, this was kind of your idea. Tell us a little bit about what you were thinking and maybe Joe, you can chime in on ways that you guys collaborated to kind of fully flesh the vision out. Yeah, I think it was clear during our uh, deep dive discussions that we had a lot of data available about our service lines, but really needed the technology to pull those things together and get those into a single view um, so that when our users are actually consuming this data, they have access to uh, you know, the right record to use uh, for their decision-making. And while we may not be able to show 100% of our services, um, you know, kind of in the first pass, it gives us that platform to build off of and uh, mature from there and really pulls together these disparate systems. Yeah, I think if I remember right, you know, we were one of the things that that uh, that came up was the idea of a kind of a one stop shop for the the nice source consumers to say, I can go into GIS and from within GIS, I can find any information I need uh, about these services. Um, and so, not only did we map them, but we also linked them to other systems, as as you know, Ben was kind of describing, so that you didn't have to try to remember five different systems or whatever. You could just come in and and GIS would have the information or would link you to the information that you might need. So I can so. see the vision here. Um, ben, maybe you could elaborate on what are the challenges? Like if this wasn't, you know, you were headed in a new direction. What were the challenges that were present that, um, that you had to overcome to really bring this together? Yeah, so, so it really goes back to those disparate systems where we were collecting information about our services in different ways and different formats. Um, and with different levels of accessibility. So we had some of those as scanned records and entered into a document management system where you could go and see that scanned record, uh, access it by address or by customer ID. Uh, we have our customer information system, which lists the address in that customer ID, uh, along with the gas pressure system that they're connected to. Uh, but then we also had some uh, small percentage of our services that were already mapped. Uh, so we had to add those to the mix along with uh, a lot of survey grade GPS data that had been collected, uh, but wasn't necessarily collected for entire service lines. It may only be collected for the meter location or a few points in the middle of the service line, or it could be almost the entirety of the service line. And uh, a lot of complexity there to add those things together and find the best possible placement for each of those services with a focus on connecting them to the correct pressure system rather than just the nearest facility. Okay, now, now Joe, it sounds to me like you had some pretty good ideas as to how you, how you could get this done. Can you briefly explain what those look like? Yeah, sure, as, as we were having these discussions and um, you know, this and other ideas were being presented, you know, my, my thought was very much around, okay, how would, how would we, Critigen, help a nice horse to do that? And FME is something that, that came up. They'd already been using FME for some of their GPS initiatives and we, we discussed the, the, how utilizing the FME technology along with ESRI geocoders and, and data from these various systems could be all combined into an algorithm to, to help you know, define how we would map them in an automated fashion along with applying a confidence interval to the, the mapping so that users could have some information about you know, how accurate it was versus you know, how, you know, what information came from what systems. I think it ended up being a very collaborative effort. Uh, the, the knowledge and participation of the NISORS experts really led us to um, a much more involved and, and I think much more complete uh, solution than what we had done for previous clients. Yeah, Joe, you're describing a situation. I think our secret sauce of Critigen tends to be 
the collaborative way that we work with our clients. And it sounds like that that was exactly what happened here. Um, we're on the back end of that now where you guys have done some really good work. There's some great discovery and you've done some really good work. So, sounds like that, there, that there's a, um, a general feeling that, that this was successful. Like John, maybe from you and then Dan, I'd like from the nice source perspective and then the criticism perspective on a scale of one to 10, where are we successful, success wise? One being, one being a total flop and 10 being a uh, grand slam. Yeah. I think everything that was within our control, 10, uh, I think we, we hit, hit the mark and, and deliver the value that we could. Uh, there are some things that were beyond our control within the scope of the project. Uh, Cause obviously we were dependent on access and, and quality of the data uh, to Ben's point of bringing it together. Once, once we brought that together in some instances, we just didn't have enough. Uh, and you talk about the partnership, there was times within the project where we had to come together and talk about alternatives. And we always opted for the s safest uh, kind of approach. We, we wanted to avoid false positives and make sure that we were putting the best information uh, out there for, for our field users to engage with and make the right risk informed decision. So everything within our control, I'd say we delivered on that value uh, and made it a lot easier for folks to Joe's point to have GIS be that single point uh, of reference uh, for service line related information uh, and get easily access everything that they would need uh, to identify where are my customers and where, what are they connected to. So for uh, the Dan. things you can, tr can control, John, you, you're going to give it a 10 Sounds like about a seven or eight for the things that you can't control. Is that that fair? Yeah, I, I, I would I, I would say that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Dan? What do you think? Yeah. Well, and, and I'll come back to that. You know, seven or eight on the things we can't control. But from a Christian perspective, um, certainly a, a, a very successful partnership with Nysource. And I'll go back to something Joe had alluded to that you know we had actually done a similar uh, project for uh, a large tier one, you know, gas utility in the East Coast of the United States uh, about 18 months prior. Um, their objectives were a little bit different. Um, their, their need for confidence level and accuracy was slightly lower uh, just based on where they were at in, in their maturity. Um, but the thing I would point out was um, their, they did not have nearly the same depth or breadth of, um, of, experience in their internal staff. Um, and so the fact that Ben and John's team already had a vision for what they wanted to achieve, uh, already kind of, you know, knew the ins and outs of the data that they had to work with, as well as what their objectives were, that really gave Joe and I and, and the critics and team a really good starting point where we were able to take the success we had had with some previous clients and really elevate our game and, and build off those prior experiences um, with Ben and John based on, on, you know, the foundation they already had in place and the vision they already had. So for us, that's the best, you know, that's all you can hope for, you know, we're, we're, <laughs> that's why we're in this business um, to, to kind of move the industry forward and, and get good outcomes. So big success from our, our perspective. I will go back uh, briefly and hit, hit on John's point. You know, there were some things that were out of our collective control and I'll, I'll oversimplify it and say, you know, in, in one of the states, the data inputs um, left a little to be desired. And, and so we just didn't have as much quality data to work with. Um, but what's been great is that in the last nine to 12 months or so, NYSource has, has put in a lot of work to improve um, improve the quality of those data inputs. And therefore we are just now starting to enhance the service line mapping automation uh, to leverage those improved data inputs. So they improved the data. We're now working to improve the automation and the algorithm, both to leverage that improved data. This is the first objective. And the second objective is make it easier for nice source to rerun this over time. So Ben talked about you know, getting to, dare I say, 100% over a period of time. Um, you know, when we first did this a year ago, we were sort of thinking of running at one time, and, you know, shelved the project thereafter. But I think we all saw enough value that now we're taking a slightly different approach, make it repeatable, make it reusable, make it easy for an eye source to rerun this, um, you know, perhaps a couple times a year uh, going forward. 
Well, it sounds like a great plan, actually. It sounds like a, a great plan for improvement. Certainly, there are some next steps. But before we move on to that, John or Ben, I'm sure you have some feedback, internal feedback. How, how does the business see this? I mean, how are, how are, how are the people that you serve seeing this uh, project and what it does for their, their daily lives? Yeah, I could certainly start, Ben. Um, I would say that the feedback I hear uh, and read uh, is very positive. Uh, and I would say what they like most is, is kind of what Joe referenced, that single point, uh, having the ability to, to get to the information and even from their, their mobile device, uh, get accessing uh, customer connections and service line features and that, that service line record that we hyperlinked. Uh, they love having the accessibility uh, to all this information. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, um, there are some uh, who, who are frustrated because what we took in this automated approach uh, where we didn't have the GPS data uh, to draw a more precise as-built, we're drawing a straight line. Uh, and it's symbolized to, to designate that. We communicated and trained on that. But even with all of that uh, kind of change effort, people are still struggling to view it in that way. Uh, so if you're looking at it to be an as-built and it's not that, uh, there's naturally going to be some, some frustration. So that, that has nothing to do with the, our, our approach or, or what the tool delivered to GIS. It, it's more on the, the people side of it and communication side of it. And that's where some of the negative feedback has come in. Uh, ben, what, so you can't, you can't do magic. Um, it, the data is the data. Correct. Yeah. And we certainly could have taken a very different approach. So we took the automated approach and we were able to get substantial return on that. So we, we moved the needle quite, quite considerably. Um, I, I actually don't have a problem saying we were at what Ben roughly 4% mapped. Uh, and I think we ended at around 72% mapped. Uh, so we fell short of, of what we set as our target, but to Dan's point that we didn't stop our effort. Uh, so we've made a lot of uh, continued efforts to uh, make further improvements uh, but with that said, I think we could have taken an approach that was much more manual, Bruce, and, and allowed for a much more precise drawing based on someone looking at it and manually drawing it. Uh, but we would not have been able to get that size of a change uh, in the time frame we did and anywhere near the cost that we did. That's a, that's a good description, John, of the trade-offs of going with the automated approach versus the manual approach. I mean, that the, the, the great big the big gains that you got so early in, in an initiative like that. Ben, do you think you have the data to, to get to, to close the gap between 100% that Joe talked about and 72% that we had? Yeah, so, so we've come up with a few different ways to get that data to kind of close that gap. Um, getting to 100% is going to be a challenge. Um, it was a surprise to me, actually, how many of our uh, very rural areas don't have addressing and trying to match a uh, address or a customer name to a structure uh, is a real challenge in some of those areas. So some of those may even require some field observation, um, but we've got some work going now that will move the needle on the uh, placement of the existing services. Well, that's fantastic. Well, all in all, it sounds like a tremendous success and it sounds like that, uh, that the, the relationship between NISORS and Critigen played a big role in the success of this of this project, and will play a role in the future of uh, of closing that gap. So that's that's an exciting future. Any last words from any of you to to help the user to help the, the viewers understand uh, any more about this or anything that you want to say that we didn't say, Dan? I'll, I'll raise my hand for one more. And and uh, you know it's funny because we 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 talk about what does the future look like, and we we talked a bit about you know how automation took. Uh, in investment and got us an outsized gain in a short period of time. We talked about then closing that gap to continue to improve the automation over time. But there is another element here, um, which is, you know, I'm, I'm sort of visioning a few years down the road, but um, once you can start to deploy things like GIS mobility, mobility to the field as one example, and you'd start to think about um, a work management initiative and a field service initiative. There's this concept of self-healing data, where which sounds like a little bit like magic, right, Bruce? But oh, the being 
you know, rather than say doing a complete field survey of your entire system and what can sometimes be a prohibitive cost to doing that and, and time, you can start to deploy these mobility tools so that as you're visiting uh, parts of your infrastructure, you are as building them as part of your course of normal operations, so to speak, and certainly as new infrastructure is being installed over time. So that's an additional mechanism and strategy for continuing to improve this data over time. Because as we all know, the data is not static. Service lines are dug up and rebuilt on the other side of somebody's yard. New service lines are installed. So that's sort of a uh, going forward strategy as well beyond the automation that we talked about here today. Yeah, I'd actually no, like no to... magic there, Dan. That's just a good use of, of the tools that you have. Joe, you were saying? I was just going to say, you know, I'd like to ask, ask the question of, of John and Ben. Of, you know, we talk about data accuracy. How, how has this project influenced um, visibility and support for improving data accuracy going forward? Yeah, so I can speak to that one a little bit as uh, my team has responsibility for any map revisions that are submitted. And definitely having the data out there, making the data visible, knowing that people actually care about this data has certainly improved the uh, likelihood that we would have somebody report a data condition uh, that would have gone unnoticed previously. Uh, now they're, they're more engaged in letting us know about uh, where they see data that could use improvement. Yeah, yeah well, service line mapping was one of the first initiatives. Uh, I think su support for data quality uh, has been there uh, from leadership and continues to be there. And I think Ben is, is spot on when you ask the question, Joe, because not, there is value to knowing what you don't know. Uh, and I think adding these features to GIS gave you very visual cues of where something was missing or where your underlying records maybe were wrong. Uh, because when we connect based on our records to a main and you look at that and you say, well, that, that doesn't look right. Uh, that results in a map revision. Uh, and there's some of those things that we can query ourselves of, hey, based on the data, where are some of these th situations that we're seeing uh, to help us to narrow our focus to where we need to improve our records. So a, a lot of value beyond just um, connecting those customers to the main uh, and, and helping to highlight where we have further improvement to our underlying data uh, and data quality uh, is needed. Well, that's a great insight. There's value to knowing what you don't know. I'm going to remember that for the future. <laughs> well, gentlemen, this is a good conversation, highlighting a really uh, a great project that I think will pay off for NiceHorse in the future and gave us a great opportunity to, to, serve, uh, for, to serve you as a company. And we're, we're grateful for that.